hands-on learning, as it is called in North America, simply means students having to manipulate what they're studying. In general sense, it means learning by experience. And this method of teaching has a way of challenging your creative ability to do something different from the mundane. The Canadian administration appreciates the influence of human capital development. That demonstrates why the hands-on learning approach is a preference for students at all levels in Canada. Specialists say healthy financial growth entails high domestic infrastructure, foreign relations, technological discoveries, and above all, a productive workforce. The minds on design has lessened the dilemma of unemployment in Canada. Learners who engage in in-depth studies into objects, phenomena and concepts extract meaning and understanding from experiences to persevere in the real world. In a nutshell, they rarely depend on white-collar jobs. Professor Nduka Uchiono of Carleton University, Canada says, hands-on learning is the best approach in a world that is continually evolving. The educational system creates opportunities for, for children to explore their skills and to explore their talents. Uh, we need to go beyond the traditional system of education that just imparts knowledge and pays emphasis on grades and certificates. The other side of it is to see the evolving system whereby emphasis is no longer on grades. So you find that in many parts of the Western world, you do not have students coming out first, second, the way we went through school. And so you could leave school so broken because uh, you came out last in the class. And others might taunt you. The system here recognizes that every child has his own gifts. Sydney Otobeze and Kosu Okwokenye are Nigerian students studying in Canada. You know, in Canada was the first time that I had exams where um, they could be open book. And for me when I came it was a huge mind-blowing experience because I couldn't understand how I could be allowed to you know look at my book and write an exam. The answers are not really in the textbook. It's really from, you know, your understanding of the concepts and how well you're able to apply them. It, it develops your ideas. It helps you grow and, you know, modify those ideas. It helps you, you know, structure those ideas better. So by the time you're outside, you're in the real world, you're able to apply those ideas into daily life and it creates a lot more entrepreneurial opportunities to begin with. And it also, you know, closes the gap in unemployment. They're always preparing you for the real world. They're always making sure that you're never handicapped. You're never not able to know what to do. And because of that, I'm a better person. I, I think that's a lot of the reason why a lot of us, after school, are able to go out into the world and do our own thing. We are able to open businesses at age 19. I have gotten this great opportunity here, but am I going to be selfish and keep it to myself? And honestly, I don't think that I'm going to. I think that after learning here, I'm going to try and impact Nigeria. I'm going to try and change the educational system for people for people there. Because even here, when you're an international student, you have to pay about three or four times the amount of fees. And that to me is not okay. When I got to Canada, I took a short course in broadcast performing arts just to gain the Canadian experience. On a typical day, we had an hour of theory and spent the rest of the day on location covering events, scripting, editing, post-producing and presenting like we do at the Nigerian Television Authority. At the end of the program, 60% of my colleagues built their own studios and became employers of labor. Some became freelance reporters and, as I speak, are stringing for various television stations across the globe. 